Elon Musk has a grand plan to colonize Mars and make humanity a multi-planetary species. But what SpaceX would be doing once they land on Mars? And what are the plans to colonize the Red Planet? Well, let's find out. SpaceX is a private space organization that is trying to get to the people to Mars. They are enthusiastically developing ways to reach Earth's nearest planet, which is Mars, and planning to colonize it in the future. They have a plan to do it, and it's quite detailed, but there are some questions you might have. Such as, how will we get there? Traveling to Mars was never easy. If it were a smooth venture, we would have sent humans on Mars by now. Before we continue further, be sure to subscribe to our channel, that way you won't miss any of our weekly videos. As we all know, Earth and Mars are technically neighbors in the solar system, and their distances apart are around 225 to 400 million kilometers. As these two planets have their own orbit. It just depends on the part of the year. As they move at different speeds around the Sun and have quite a distance between them. It is found that traveling to the Sun is actually 2.5 times easier than it would be to traveling to Mars in terms of distances. If we compare the traveling distances from Earth to Mars and from Earth to the Moon, it would be 986 times farther than the Moon. That's quite a distance, and with our current technology, that travel would take a year or two, depending on how big the ship is, the number of passengers, payload weight, and more. Presently, we have only built the robotic probes and satellite rovers that have been landed on Martian soil. The SpaceX program is preparing their own colonization of Mars, and to launch this, they're dispatching cargo ships first to the Red Planet through their Big Falcon rocket. They're working on this plan right now, and have the ambition to launch the first cargo ships by 2022. Once those cargo ships touch down, they'll send out the first wave of colonists in 2024. If you're wondering what will be on these cargo ships, then that's simple. To help speed up the process of both landing on Mars and setting up the first Martian base, SpaceX will use their Starship to go and make room for keeping food, energy supplies, mining and building equipments on the planet. That way, once the astronauts get off the ship and make sure that everything is okay, they can directly get to work on setting everything up. Obviously, since it's still 2020 at present, that means things could change, and the technology could hit a breakthrough that allows them to get to Mars even faster, or help them set a Martian base quickly. But at this point, these starships are the best chance we have of getting to Mars in a good amount of time with people on them. And once that happens, the colonization can begin. Now the next question is, where do we land on Mars? After all, landing at a key position, one that can help sustain the life of the colonists is important. The foremost thing is, we have to find the right environment for humans. While Mars may look like a uniform piece of rock, it's not the case. There are good areas and bad areas to land. Scientists have decided that the best place for everyone to land is near one of the poles of the planet. If you're thinking about our own poles and how cold it is there, you might wonder why they would choose there. It's simple, because near those poles is ice. Specifically, ice deposits that have been untouched for many thousands of years. We need water to survive, especially on a planet that doesn't have oceans like Mars. So, if these ice deposits can be broken down and converted into liquid water, a major hurdle of colonization can be overcome in relatively no time. So location is important, but that's still only one part of the equation. There's a lot of difference between Mars and Earth. But the biggest difference is the atmosphere. As Mars' atmosphere is not as thick as Earth's. This is a huge difference as the planet isn't shielded from the dangerous sun radiation that our Earth shields us from most times. Also, since the atmosphere can't keep things out, that also means that things aren't trapped inside, including various gases that we would need to breathe freely on the planet. Due to this, when we colonize Mars, we would need to have a base that would allow us to not just breathe, but also protect us from all the effects of the harsh Martian landscape and ensure that we can live without the need for spacesuits. SpaceX is working on that as well. Their plan is to have a singular massive base to start the colonization with. 
The base itself will be 41 feet tall, 16 feet wide, and have three different airlocks that will allow the colonists to go from the inside to the outside with minimal change in air pressure. It stated that the initial team of colonists would be about six people, which is fair for a first attempt at surviving on Mars. Obviously you can't just start off with a large city. If it proves successful and there are no serious issues with the base in terms of air quality and longevity, more bases could be sent. Ones that could connect to each other via pressure tubes not unlike various sci-fi shows and movies have shown. Slowly but surely, a vast space colony would be grown. One thing that might have slipped your mind when you thought about how we would colonize Mars is the power needed to power everything. While it's true that the first colonists would likely be outfitted with something to last them a lot of days, and maybe years, and supply ships could bring in more things like batteries, but we must also prepare for the worst. What if the main generator is struck by something in an accident? What happens if something from space causes the batteries to fail? What would be done then? The answer is in the plan. SpaceX intends to launch the colony with a series of reactors and generators. Some of them will be meant to specifically power the station itself. While others will be used to test making power based on the elements that are naturally and readily available on Mars. Thorium for example is one element they believe they can harness a great amount of power from. And with the mining equipment that would be brought to Mars, they could harvest the elements to power their equipment. Believe it or not, this is actually a key element of truly colonizing an area. It's easy to just go to a new place and bring along everything you think you need to survive. But to truly live there you need to use the natural elements and resources around you. The plan for SpaceX is to live on Mars for about nine months. After that, they will return to Earth. This would be the first round trip from Mars in the human history. A true milestone for mankind, and a trip that could be the start of solar system colonization. After they return to Earth, a bunch of research and tests will begin. Various samples from Mars will be tested for microbial life. If they found microbes in the rocks of Mars, then this would be the first evidence of life beyond Earth. This will totally change our world, and we would be able to answer the lifelong question of, are we alone in the universe? But that's not it. The official colonists from Mars will be tested to see how healthy they are, and is Mars really livable. All of this data will be vital to the second trip to Mars. Where Elon Musk is planning to go even bigger with his plans. And by that time, the governments of the Earth will no doubt be helping out as well. At least we hope so. The goal of the second mission will be to help not just expand the colony, but help expand the potential of the colony. Including giving them more materials and equipment to work with as they try and truly establish an everlasting colony on Mars. One of the ways that Elon Musk and company intend to do that is via space cranes. He wants to make cranes that'll be able to go up into space, grab equipment from the shuttles that orbit it, and then bring it down to the research base so that the colonists can use it. This would allow more speedy travel and less work for the colonists themselves. Not to mention, it would allow for the transport of heavier materials without the fear of losing them during flight. Plus, the cranes will be reusable for some time ensuring their worth. Once the groundwork for the colony begins, SpaceX and other space agencies will work together to send supplies, equipment and more to truly help build our first space colony. It won't look like much at first, but with enough time, effort and energy, we'll get there. And with each month we're on Mars, we'll be growing our reach in special ways. For example, NASA is developing a vehicle that'll allow astronauts to travel on the terrain of Mars so that they can explore various things. Including potential new landing spots or highly rich mineral areas. This will be important for the future of the colony. And let's not forget about food. While there will be rations and supplies on the early missions, the goal will be to somehow grow food on Mars naturally. It's believed that a greenhouse will be a part of an early mission to help scientists test how to grow the plants naturally on Mars in some capacity. The quicker that happens, the quicker supply runs of food won't be necessary. What do you think of SpaceX's plan to colonize Mars? What do you think is going to be necessary to make a successful Mars colony? Let us know in the comments section. Hey guys, thanks for watching. 
If you like the video then make sure to subscribe to our channel.